Hey guys, what's going on? Duffking56 here, back with another Halo 4 commentary. And today, we have the special guest. We have the coach himself. Why don't you introduce yourself, sir? My name is Evan, and my gamer tag is Gated. And I was once a member of the uh, pro Halo 3 team, Virtuosity. Once a member, always a member, sir. Welcome, welcome. And today, I'll probably be just referring to you as coach, because what we have today, we have the coach's corner. Hopefully, it is going to be a... Repeating series where I have my special guest here, Coach Evan, come on, and we'll talk about a few different topics. We'll see wherever this thing takes us. Today, what, why don't you talk a little bit about the gameplay we have for you guys today? Uh, well, first off, I'd just like to thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure. Uh, the gameplay we have today is a 4v4 uh, extraction game type on the map Abandon. Uh, this was a match that we played on Game Battles against a team that took 17th place at the opening uh, MLG tournament at Dallas. So we were a little nervous going in, but uh, as you'll be able to see from watching the gameplay, we uh, ended up pulling it out in the end, and we beat them 2-1. So right now, uh, as you're looking at, we're just, uh, once again, an extraction game type. Very interesting, and uh, you know we'll kind of guide everyone along as we play through this right now. Spoilers, coach. Spoilers. You gotta make. You gotta entice them to watch the whole video. Now they're gonna click off, knowing that you guys. Well, I shouldn't even re-spoil it again. But that's okay. That's good. Extraction is a completely new game type for me. So this is new. This is only the third time I've watched this through, and of course it's beautiful for one because we're looking at your point of view, correct? That's correct. And for two, it's just a completely new game type for Halo 4, as far as I'm concerned. It seems like to be a nice little marriage of capture the flag and domination. If you're in a little Call of Duty perspective there. If you guys are actually familiar with Blacklight, a lot of the capturing is very similar to how you capture a point in the Domination and Blacklight Retribution, but obviously you know nothing about that, Evan. You eat, breathe, and sleep Halo, so why don't you talk a little bit more about Extraction, just because it's, you know, fairly new to pretty much everybody if you're not new to the scene. Maybe some pros and cons, you know the deal. Exactly. Well, as you pointed out, uh, it is that has a nice marriage between the Capture the Flag and also um, you know, some Call of Duty aspects as well. Uh, it was interesting coming into it because we had no idea how to play it, you know, what kind of strategy to go into. Um, but, you know, it's basic. There are points A, B, and C on the map. They tend to, you know, go back and forth pretty smoothly. I believe it goes, uh, you know, point A, B, and C are always the same. And you'll kind of see it uh, go back and forth between, you know, go, it'll go A to B, back to A, and then to the C destination. And you know, it's as simple as the team has to stand there. You're gonna press uh, a button to you know extract the point, and then you gotta defend that point for I believe it's 40 seconds. Uh, if the other team happens to get that, um, then it'll become their uh, extracted point, and then you kind of go back and forth to see who can hold it off first, and then it'll move from there. Um, as you pointed out, there are pros and cons to this game type. One of the biggest cons uh, that I know of, and that I've talked about with a lot of my friends and people that I play with online has to be the fact that you know you can control the same point back and forth between both teams for the entire game and there is no overtime so you have to be constantly aware of not only the time of the game but also you know if you are behind what you have to do to win the game and you know I'm hoping that in the future MLG realizes that and adds an overtime but at this point it's all about you know who's gonna control the the flow of the game and get ahead uh, you know right off the bat so it's really interesting because it's a very, like you were saying, it's a very awareness type of game type where you have to be aware 100% of the time, you know, whether or not you have the point, whether they're trying to extract your point or whether the point's going to change, like you got to be on top of your game. And the one thing exactly. that I can see it at least moving towards is that how, you know how in at least when we watch customs in like Halo 3, you would have 30 minutes on the clock, but you'd only play capture the flag for something like 15 minutes. And I could see the game sort of have that running time at the end, that 15 minutes, just in case you're still fighting over that point. And then if it's at, you know, after that, maybe you have some sort of 4v4 playoff where you only have one life, and then you just, once you're dead, you're dead. Some sort of playoff like that at the end, if there's a tie after 30 minutes. But could you mm -hmm. see that possibly being a resolution of this whole deal? Anything would honestly work at this point, because uh, it's, it's always frustrating um, for any team. Because, I mean, we see this with anything in life, sports, uh, right now gaming. Um, teams will pick it up at the last minute to go. Out of nowhere, they'll come back, they'll get a point, they'll tie it up. And with this game type, you can't do that. You know, you, you get the extraction point with 10 seconds left, you don't even have time to defend it, the game ends. So, 
uh, once again, really frustrated at that point. Don't understand it, um, but just got to kind of work around it for now. And like I said, you know, plan ahead, get ahead, and you know, get that win. Exactly, and it's just so different because it's completely new for everybody. So at least you know there's some sort of level playing field there where no one has the sort of edge just because they played maybe Halo Reach MLG, they didn't take a break or anything like that. So, you know, it's a new game type for everybody. It's a new game type for MLG too because they obviously haven't played it and they're always going to be working out the kinks as they always have because, I mean, as you would know if you're familiar with the community, as I've been informed, that the V1 settings are just out. So, you know, they're only on V1. I could see this becoming a really fun game type in the future when you have maybe V2, V3, have a little bit of time to work for it. I guess the one thing that they're waiting for are these tournaments where you can watch these teams play the game mode itself. Because when you're watching the teams play it, you get a feel for how the game plays, the momentum, the ebb and flow of what's going on in the game, you know what I mean? So Most you definitely. have this sort of aspect where, you know, everyone's a guinea pig first. I mean, no one knew what Oddball was going to be like when Oddball first came out as a game type, but once you saw the team start to play it, you had an idea of how you could change it and sort of adapt it, evolve it to what you're doing as, and so far of like tournament play, because tournament play is so different. Why don't you talk about that? Because a lot of people I know aren't, aren't competitive at Halo or play competitive Halo. So, you know, it's kind of interesting to see like one of at least the first console pioneers as far as FPS goes for uh, tournament play. Why don't you talk about a little bit the difference between tournament and just regular live play? Well, uh, for anyone who's ever played on LAN, whether you're at your friend's house or, you know, you're at a LAN party, anything like that, it's, it's so different. Um, you know, I've had some people go back and forth with me on Halo 4 about host, and, you know, uh, obviously the Xbox Live Warriors, it's always been thrown around. Um, <laughs> we don't see it a lot as much with 4v4 because there's a lot more people that can shoot together and take down someone who has host. Uh, I've experienced it a lot more with my friend in 2v2 on game battles. Uh, you know, if you're playing someone who lives in Texas or uh, Mexico, anything like that, you're going to have a hard time getting them uh, getting them killed and, you know, uh, winning that game unless you have really good teamwork. Uh, but as far as tournament play goes, you know, once again, LAN experiences are just totally different. Uh, for anyone who wants to go to a tournament, uh, you got to start landing as soon as you can. Um, not even uh, LAN itself, but also just the, the environment. Uh, I just returned with my, my 2v2 partner. Um, from a LAN in Canada this past weekend, and uh, <laughs> the building was kind of filled with people yelling, uh, you know, a lot of uh, trash talking, and that's another thing that can get into people's heads and a lot of people aren't used to. So a lot of different aspects and factors to take into consideration when you're going to a tournament. Um, there's really, uh, uh, you know, a lot of problems that can occur uh, that people aren't expecting. Like I said, you know, if you're playing in your room by yourself on live, it's a totally different environment you don't really hear the other team um, but when you're sitting across from them and you know they can get into your head you gotta once again prepare for that um, so definitely take that into consideration oh definitely and I completely agree with you it's a completely different environment the one thing that really always sort of set me aside like at least from when I played with you guys at the winter wonderland this year was that it's none of my own equipment besides you know my xbox but if you watch like a lot of competitive play where you're, you're looking at main stage events you're, it's not your TV, you know, it's not, it's it's your controller, but it's, you know, it isn't your Xbox, it isn't anything that is yours, so, like, you have to get used to everything being in place for you, you have to, you have to get used to walking into somewhere, setting everything up with a certain amount of time limit, because you're talking about TV time and stuff like that, or at exactly. least when you're streaming, you have time constraints as far as maybe how long you're allowed to stream and set up time, you know, you don't want to keep people waiting, because when you have different games cycling through on a LAN, you don't want, you know, people standing there and shit like that. W w walking into a room and having to set up and just getting your own thing going for you, that's got to be tough for at least momentum-based games. And once you sit down and you get into the zone, it's like it probably flies by. Like you were talking about, you had a, you played a game where it was 5-4, to four, and that's Team Slayer. And I couldn't imagine how short that must have felt for you guys, but how long it probably was for everyone watching it because... You know, they're just, they're not immersed in the environment like you are, but once you hit that flow model, which I'm going to talk about a lot later, is it goes by fast. You want to talk about that a little bit? Uh, exactly. And that was another thing was where we played that game. And just to give everyone a, a heads up, we played a, a lockout game. It was a Team Slayer on lockout. Uh, if we won the game, we won the match. And it ended at a 5-4 
um, score, which everyone was, you know, kind of shocked at. But it wasn't the first game that had low digits for the entire weekend, and Lockout in the first place was kind of a questionable map going into the tournament. Um, but once again, as you pointed out, you know, uh, for us, once you get into that flow and even, uh, you know, you get into the top or you want to just win a game, you're going to, you know, be willing to do anything to get that win. Uh, even if it requires, uh, you know, pitching a tent, <laughs> you know, kind of sitting back uh, as, as opposed to everyone else watching and they're wondering, you know, why you're sitting there and, you know, just why it's taking so long. Um, but for us, you know, it's going by fast. We want that clock to end. We want to get that win. And once again, we're willing to do anything to do that. Exactly. And if you were to look at something like that when you're playing on live, like you'll have at the end lobby, everyone is going to be jawing at you for camping and all that bullshit that yeah. people like to call out because that's you know, everyone's crutch is to say like, ah, oh, it's how the other team played that affected our game. But I can see how, you know, when you're at a LAN, you got people looking over your shoulder, you got people casting. When you're on the main stage, you got people chanting and you got people yelling and screaming every time there's a kill or there's a nade thrown or anything like that. I mean, there's a whole new dimension, a whole new element that you have to deal with, and it's got to be so unnerving just sitting there like, could, I mean, I just can't imagine like four, if the game was 4-4, four, four, and it's going into the last bit, and you're waiting for that last kill, you know, to put you over the edge to win, or the last cap, you got the crowd all of a sudden chanting the other team's name, like, how does that feel? It's just got to be, it's got to be terrible, but it's, it's terrifying, you know what I mean? It's unreal. I agree with you 100%, and I... You know, that was one of my biggest disappointments was I never had experiences on the main stage. Uh, right after I, you know, obviously retired <laughs> from uh, from Halo 3, my team got on the main stage. And they were not the favorite, uh, as expected. You know, once again, as you pointed out, you, you get in there and you have all these people in bleachers yelling your name, calling you out uh, for not doing well. You miss a snipe or something. They're yelling at you. And it, it's unnerving. It's it's ridiculous. And, I mean, I'm... I'm you know, saddened that I didn't get to experience the main stage, but at the same time, I'm kind of happy that I didn't get, uh, you know, yelled at and also ridiculed for, uh, you know, something as, as simple as not missing or missing a snipe, uh, things like that. Um, another thing I did want to say was we made sure, and I always do this, to apologize and, uh, you know, if I do camp, things like that. And the responses I've, I've always gotten back are that the other team, you know, they're frustrated that they lost, but as they pointed out, they would do the same thing in our our situation so I never feel extremely bad about uh, camping or you know, once again doing what we need to do to get the win and it's part of the game you know it's like you said you do anything to win but the trash talking all the bad mouth thing you know the chanting if you look at anything that that makes competitive gaming what it is it's that spirit that even though it's you know trash talking after the game for the most part you guys are friends and you guys are you know, all buddy buddy afterwards, you might have that video clip to go back and watch on YouTube after every once in a while when someone, you know, stands up and yells your name and says you suck or you choked or whatever. But, and so far, it's just the competitive spirit. It's so much fun, but it makes the game all that more intensive. It makes more, the game more fun to watch. And if you're in competitive gaming, it's all about the ratings if you're MLG. And that's the only thing that they gripe and talk about whenever they make videos is the ratings this, the ratings that, the tournaments this, the tournaments that. And it's probably proved to make a lot of changes, at least on the circuit, with how many tournaments they're having and how many different venues. Because, you know, as much as you guys like to play against each other, as much as the fans like to tune in and watch, it's still a business, and it'll always still be a business when you're competing with big wigs like Dr. Pepper and Bic and all those different sponsors when you're, when you're competing for ratings and, and money for ads and all that stuff. You want people to, you want venues to want to have you, and that's, you know, some of the stuff that you'd be looking forward to is all the, the competitive talk. But it looks like the game's winding down for the most part here. It looks like you guys have completely secured your victory as you were telling me you completely outplayed these guys just watching you with that sniper every once in a while a little bit of rockets except for that one bit a little bit earlier and you're about to see uh yeah a misstep with the rockets that you know i never really expect to happen but you know and here it is i mean you're lifting up right now <laughs> turn around and then what the fuck you get beat the fuck down <laughs> that's just not even fair yeah but in a way know, that guy <laughs> go ahead go ahead no, I was just going to say, you can get mad at things like that, but I've come to laugh at it, you know, even if it happens to you four times in a row, you got to just laugh at it, walk it off, and, you know, focus on moving forward and, you know, making sure you can get the job done. But even from a gameplay standpoint, that guy was major chasing, and even though it was for Rockets, that pretty much took their team out of the game for at least resecuring the point with at least 40 seconds to go. He could have at least set his focus on maybe waiting for you to lift up and maybe tossing a cheeky nade up there or something like that. So there's good and bad to everything, and 
it looks like I said you guys have the win, so you guys had to be happy with that as the team was, you know, fairly high ranked and all that. So you you, you got the victory even though you guys uh, did not win the match as far as I'm concerned. Uh, you guys had some pretty good <laughs> scores there yourself. It seems like you guys basically topped their whole team as well, even though, ah, yeah, you guys you guys just completely mashed on them. So uh, is there anything else you want to say? Um, I just want to mention to anyone who hasn't been following it, uh, you know, today the uh, they announced the next event at Dallas, which I believe is in March. Uh, I think we're still waiting to hear if Halo is definitely going to be there, but I think it's looking pretty good. So, you know, practice up, get ready, and I expect to see everyone uh, out there. I heard that and PT Virtuosity is still looking for a sponsor or two, so why don't you guys get on that and uh, get your checkbooks out, because <laughs> they're looking for tickets. <laughs> Looking for tickets, looking for a place to stay, anything that'll get us there and allow us to have a blast. You guys have cars for places to stay. Don't worry about that. Worry about getting there first. <laughs> but anyways, exactly. I want to but, thank you, know. you uh, Coach Chev. I cut you off terribly. I'm so sorry. But I'd like to thank you for coming on to Coach's Corner for the first episode, hopefully in this continuing series. Um, I want to thank everyone for watching, and hopefully you've enjoyed this gameplay. Man, I really majorly cut you off now that I think about it. Uh, this has been Duffkin56. Coach Chev, Coach Evan, please uh, finish us off here. Uh, well, once again, thank you for having me. I hope that you'll have me back after, uh, you know, going through this yourself. And, you know, thanks everyone for watching. Uh, if you'd like to add me on live, my gamer tag is the, T-H-E-E, -E, uh, space gated, G-A-T-E-D. Uh, hit me up and we'll, we'll play some, uh, some Halo 4. Uh, play some again, customs. Thanks everybody. <laughs> exactly. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, guys. Uh, enjoy. That was his first time, so go easy on us. We'll see you guys later. <laughs> Peace out. Bye.